been a while. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. Today, we will be going over everything you need to know about creating powerful earth magic like this at home. Okay, before we get started, if you would like to go ahead and support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description below where we have dozens of sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Here is a quick list of everything that we covered in the previous Magic episodes, so if you missed any of this information, I would highly recommend checking out the previous episodes first. Okay, before we get started making powerful Earth Magic, what we're going to need is some Earth-related samples. When it comes to recording Earth samples for our Magic spells, Earth and Rock are actually very poor descriptors of what we're actually looking to capture. Rocks come in all different shapes, sizes, and types. Soily ground, clay, bricks, rocks, dirt, boulders, concrete, gravel, keystones, pebbles, crushed rocks, rock flates, rock shards, roofing tiles, and sand. Rocks are not just rocks. Bricks are super useful to get that high-end crunch sound, but they sound absolutely nothing like concrete. So when you're going out to sample earth and rock-based materials, make sure to go ahead and capture a wide variety of different types of sources because those will yield dramatically different results when you come to actually building out your own spells. But to give you guys a jump start, let's go over some of the sounds that I tend to rely on heavily when designing earth-based magic spells. Earth grinding on other earth, tumbling rocks, earth impacts, earth rolling, metal impacting earth, scraping, dust falling, Tumbling earth, synthetic textures, distorted textures, rock showers, random debris movements and drops, and finally, earthquake LFE rumbles. If you are scared of getting your microphones crushed, which has happened, uh, don't worry, I've gone ahead and left links into the description below for some of my all-time favorite rock-based libraries. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and captured all of your rock-based material, let's go ahead and talk about some processing tips that you can use to create a more refined sound. So size shifting is one thing that we use in sound design all the time, and it works particularly well on rocks. By using pitch modulation, you can actually take a very small rock and make it sound very large just by lowering the pitch. This is why we go ahead and sample things at the highest sample rate possible, 96, 192, as high as you can sample it because when you go ahead and pitch things down, you'll retain more of the high-end energy and it will sound more natural. So when we're talking about compression, we're actually talking about trying to get the small details out of the rock. By doing that, we can actually go ahead and take the transient of the rock impacts and squash them down a bit, and then that way we can go ahead and boost all of these smaller, more detailed elements within the actual rock itself. Stacking compressors is one awesome trick that you can use to go ahead and get more control over your dynamics. Having a fast attack compressor with a fast release will go ahead and tame that transient down, but having another compressor right after it with a slower attack and a fast release will allow you to go ahead and rebuild the transient while still maintaining all the small details that we were able to push into the compressor. Subharmonic generators are no stranger to the series. They are awesome for creating low end where there presently wasn't one or enhancing a low end that is already there. We use them all the time. Uh, Enforcer tends to be one of my one uh, my go-to for transient heavy information, but stuff like uh, Submarine by Waves is also a fantastic option. Sometimes the simplest tools are always the best tools to use. Reversing is no stranger to this. By taking sustained sounds or even impact sounds and reversing them, you can end up creating stuff like charging sounds with texture of what you're actually trying to design. For in this case, we're using rocks. So having rock showers and then reversing those, you end up getting these nice charging sounds that you can't get with anything else. We do talk a lot about synthesis on this series, so let's go ahead and talk about a few ways that you can go ahead and create earth magic using nothing but a synth. 
Thanks, Aftertouch. I'll be honest, synthesis is not a great method for getting earthy sounds. Sure, we can make earth-shaking quakes with some low-frequency noise and sub-oscillators. And we can make the sound of pebbles being stepped on with particle noise and granularization. And we can make the sound of rock being broken off of bigger rocks using similar methods. And yeah, throw in some whooshes and stuff, you can make reasonably earthy spell sounds. Oh, that, um, that works pretty well, actually. Let's go with that. What can I say? Sometimes I surprise myself. Before I go, I also want to let you know that I have a blog where I talk about synthesis and its use within sound design. Aftertouch can link that in the description, hopefully. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Averith. If you would like to know more about synthesis, I highly encourage checking out her blog where she breaks down synthesis in a way where you can make just about any sound. Okay, just to break down this session just a little bit, anything that you see in red is a group, which I can then go ahead and export a layer from. This spell uses a cast layer, two impact layers, and a riser. Okay, so the cast layer is broken down into two sections. We have our synthetic elements, and then we have our organic elements. So let's go ahead and just quickly play the organic elements first, and then I'll add in the magical textures bit. Okay, so we have a bunch of reverse rocks as well as some tumbling rocks to give that sort of earthy charging power up. And then for our actual synthetic layer, we wanted to have a little bit more of that charging element in there. So let's go ahead and show you guys what I have broken down in there. Some nice power up sounds, a little bit of electricity, um, some rising synthetic elements as well, just to get that sort of like powering up sound. Okay, let's move on to the first impact layer. We have two main elements, which is going to be these, again, synthetic and the organic elements. The first one was going ahead and creating by taking a large amount of rocks and throwing them on the ground to create that big sort of rock tumble sound, as well as going ahead and throwing it through a bunch of processing like saturation, EQ, and um, much more distortion. Okay, from there, I've added in two more design elements, which is just a transient sort of sub and then a much longer sub. Some nice crunchy textures there to really give the sound of things being broken. The last element in the impact layer is actually a layer of enforcer, which I'm just using a nice sub down preset. Gives it this nice sort of sound. The last little bit of mixing tip here is actually a plugin called Recenter. And Waves has another one called the S1 Stereo Imager, and it, it, it will do the exact same thing. But basically, I start this at a nice 20%, and then over the course of this spell, because it's actually emanating away from the character, I increase the width as time goes by, so you'll be able to see that happening within the plugin itself. So it starts really mono and then gets wider. I have the exact same thing on the riser, which let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so our riser is built up into three different layers. We have the first layer being more organic earth sounds, which is just earth tumbling being reversed. We also go ahead and have our earthquake rumble, which will be our nice sort of below the earth sort of moving sound. And then we have a nice riser sound, uh, which is created via a synth, which is just going to have this nice charging up sound effect. And as you can see, we have the exact same preset here with recenter doing this widening effect as well. Moving on to our last layer here, it is a nice impact layer. Um, this here uses a couple of different elements that um, might be sound a little more obscure, but because this here are um, sort of blades of earth coming up out of the ground, I wanted to give it a nice sharp texture to it as well. So I'll break this down by showing you guys all the individual layers as well. To give this impact the space it needs to breathe, on the riser layer itself, I actually have it not bleeding into the impact layer itself. There's a nice little gap of space there, so that way when the impact happens, it's direct, it's punchy, it's it's fat. Versus having the riser layer kind of fade into the impact layer, the impact loses a lot of that sort of initial impact, right? If you have things drop out and then punch back up, it hits harder. The next thing I went ahead and added in was a couple BGs. It wouldn't be an aftertouch audio without BGs, so let's have a listen to those right quick. 
some nice grass movements, some winds, a lot of um, sort of unique bird sounds. Very, very nice. Um, and then the last element I actually went ahead and added in was, of course, um, some character voices just to give the a bit of effort into the spell itself, as most spells will go ahead and require some sort of vocal effort on um, the caster's part. Okay, and all together we get... If you guys did enjoy, please consider hitting the like button below as well as leaving a comment. It really, really helps build up the channel as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Consider joining the Discord channel over here where um, uh, we, we will be posting many, many, many more sound design challenges as well for you guys to go ahead and include within your own demo reels. So anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Go make some noise.